epicenter of sports and entertainment. This, this is the Loot Dog Show. Now, here's your host. Rudy That's Dog. not me. And I don't lip sync. I don't even, not even a part of the Millie Vanilli fan club. What do you know? <laughs> this is Rudy Reyes on the Rude Dog Show. Dot com. I am here live uh, on today's California, today's Canada. I'm here on LinkedIn, my own Facebook, Twitter, and an instant 12 people show up. Beautiful. Thank you so much for spending your time with me tonight. I have been loaded with 10,000 things going on. Of course, I can never handle all of them at one time, but rest assured I had my eye not only here, but I had eyes in Indianapolis, and Chris Powell joined me momentarily. We were talking about the NFL Combine in Indianapolis. A lot of great stuff from a lot of great uh, will be, when I say will be, because they're already there, they already had received an invite to the 20, uh, 23 NFL Combine. Lots of great times, lots of great athletes and more importantly, Chris Powell will bring the latest of what's going on there in Indianapolis. There is so much going on at the Combine. It will almost look like an NFL draft. Uh, I've been now to an NFL draft. Uh, the RudeDogShow.com has been uh, granted wonderful access to the NFL Combine there in Indianapolis. I don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon. Uh, but more importantly... I think it's a precursor as to what we will see uh, headed into the 2023 NFL draft happening, of course, in Kansas City, Missouri, uh, where the Chiefs just won their uh, third Super Bowl, second within the last four years, headed by a guy you should know already, and that's Patrick Mahomes. A lot of great times today out of the defense, uh, the defense men's line group. Uh, and I say that because you see these guys, the athleticism, uh, they have moxie. But behind all the combine players, there's a lot of free agent action going on there. Derek Carr uh, speaking to certain uh, owners. Uh, we lost an owner today in the Carolina Panthers. Uh, former owner had just passed away. Uh, so my condolences to him and his uh, to, to his family and, of course, those that probably knew him better. Uh, than I probably could have ever. So with that being said, I, I think there's a lot to be said for the NFL Combine. I think there's a lot of free agent uh, questions swirling in the air as Lamar Jackson uh, certainly is waiting in the wings and finding out what his fate will be. Of course, the Baltimore Ravens have been, I don't want to say verbally on the fence. They've been more on than off of the fence. And I mean that because when you look at Lamar Jackson, there's been a lot of questions surrounding his ability to receive a very high uh, and extensive contract. We knew this was coming. It was just a matter of time before it actually showed its head. I think moreover, I look at Lamar Jackson and you know he did uh, wonderful uh, things while in Baltimore. Of course, uh, thank you, Ricardo. Uh, um, but in Nisa, uh, have a nice day, sir. Thank you. Have a nice day to you as well, wherever you may be listening from, uh, wanted to let you know, there are a couple of wonderful partners I have here on the Rudox show.com that Saturdays count uh, you know, it's 12 Saturdays in a month. Uh, there's 12 week, uh, Saturdays with the NCAA season. And if you're not in it to win the natty, uh, then, Obviously, you're not part of the greatest tagline in history. Go to SaturdaysCount.com. Go get your shirt today. Mine just came in, by the way. Not here in my locale, uh, but just arrived at the factory uh, hot off the press, literally and figuratively. <laughs> so that shirt will be on its way. When I get it, I'll be wearing it. You know, it'll be, it won't be a collared shirt. I wish it was, but it's just a regular old standard T-shirt you're going to find hanging up in your closet. Uh, and of course, eventually I'll get one to Mr. Christopher Powell, who actually joins me here live on the Root Dog Show. <laughs> Coach, how are you? I don't know if you can hear me or not, or if anybody can actually hear me. Uh, I did a test earlier. It seems everybody can hear me. Uh, are you checking in okay? Audio's good? Okay, I guess that's a no. We're going to try him back here in just, in just a minute. So I'll have to figure out the audio there. 
Uh, if anybody can hear me, let me know. Uh, I did a test earlier. It said that I was live and people could actually hear me. So, uh, Ricardo, if you're still out there, uh, feel free to uh, throw a mention and I'll be able to reply accordingly. So I wanted to talk about um, what's going on um, in the uh, in the free agent uh, market. Uh, but of course, uh, Coach, can you hear me? Yes, I can. I can. I can hear you, but it's barely. <laughs> okay, I'll have to turn that up then. How's I'm, that? I'm gonna I'm I'm come back in. Okay. <laughs> well, okay. I, I I can actually hear you. So hopefully that's of some consequence. Everything's maxed out here. So um, I did a, I did a test earlier to make sure everything's kosher, um, and it seems to be working out. So maybe maybe that'll do it. Maybe it won't. Um, is that is that better now? Can you hear me now? I'd like to sound like a commercial. I, I, uh, yeah, I can hear you now. I think okay. I can hear you now. Yeah, wonderful. yeah, we're good. Okay, wonderful. Everybody else can hear me loud and clear. Thank you, Jessica for tuning in and uh, thank you for that notification. I certainly appreciate that as well. Anyway, so what's going on? What is the latest going on there in Indianapolis? I know you're, uh, you're there hot off the press of what's going on. So give, uh, give the listeners and uh, the viewers a little bit of insight as to what you experienced today with a lot of draftees. So there's a lot going on today. Obviously the, the morning um, version here at, the, at Indianapolis um, we start off with the special teams, the field goal kickers, place um, place kickers, and then we also had some um, in the afternoon. Well, in the late morning session, we had our uh, cornerbacks and safeties, and then uh, also in the afternoon, the actual portion at Lucas Old Stadium, you had your linebackers and um, defensive linemen. So pretty much, that's going to be essentially what happened today, as far as the combine, the focus position wise. Okay. And, you know, there seems to be a lot of great uh, talent out on the field today, uh, as well as those that are in the podium that were there for the interviews, those that were up for the conversation. Uh, tell me about some of the great conversations you had earlier today and kind of give me an idea as to what their, what their feelings were. Were they jitters? Were they shy? Did they not want to talk on camera? Were they kind of docile? For the most part, most most of the guys were very confident. There's you didn't really tell like a shyness. I know there was one which I'm gonna upload this clip, but it was um a the safety I forget it was um it I forget oh it was from um from uh, Penn State the safety from Penn State I what was his name I and I had it you know had it on the tip of my tongue, but um a lot of scouts had him essentially. Like it's you know you, you know how the draft process is where we have comps where I think they're not fair in a sense but more so like for the novel so for the for the novel because a lot of people you know so one of the comparison was to um was to Ryan Clark and he was like well you know I'm my own person you know essentially saying hey you know I'm not you know I'm not essentially uh, Ryan Clark I am my own person. Which I understand that. And that's one thing, too, where, you know, I get that. But, you know, and we know how the draft process is. You're always going to have comps just for, the, just for the sake of it, just to be like, okay, he's a Dane brand. Even though, in theory, you know, you think of that, you know, as, as Ryan Clark has somewhat of a – even now in, in his post-career, he, you know, he has somewhat of a name brand. But um, I was really impressed. It's was, it was a couple of guys, especially – um, from the cornerback and the safety positions, two were actually team captains of their squad. So I think that's another thing, too, where those are really impressive. I mean, you just look at the simple fact. I know one that really stood out um, was the uh, – he was a cornerback from uh, Coastal Carolina. Um, okay. You think okay. about Coastal Carolina where there was such a resurgence in that actual um, team, you think think to yourself, no one really was talking about Coastal Carolina. I mean, did people even knew that they had football near Myrtle Beach, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, there's there's always been some some type of question as to whether or not Coastal Carolina has a football team, but they do, and they're actually not bad. They're not bad at all. They're not in the top, you know, five or top ten, and 
maybe scouting hasn't been as good at high school for Coastal Carolina in recent memory. Uh, but I, I've n- notably there have been some really good players to come out of Coastal Carolina. Those guys that have relatively made somewhat of an impact at the next level. Um, what other small schools were there a- outside of Coastal? So a few. Um, I knew there was someone. Um, it was one from South Alabama, which that's you know I've, that's someone you you rarely see like someone from you know from South Alabama that was like somewhat of a first for me but um you pre- for the most part you pretty much had like the usual suspects um you had dare i say like um Boys State is kind of with this is isn't the Kellen Moore Boys State that we grew accustomed to they kind of went back into some not mediocrity but they kind of went now outside of kind of the scope of college football where we really don't really focus on uh, boys say like it, it like we did in the past, right? Then there have been a lot of great players. Whether and you can even name some other small schools like North Dakota State, you know, University and DSU, and and so they haven't uh, done anything in recent memory other than win their own conference, which 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 should speak at the collegiate level. So you know what, this is our bid. This is the reason why we belong at least the conversation of going to a national championship. Now, thank God for the NCAA. They decided to flip the script, um, actually change that dynamic. Uh, and, the, and the playoff system is going to change a, a, as well. Uh, teams are going to the Big Ten, going to make it big whatever you want to call it, Big 24 or whatever the number. It's just, <laughs> it's just, it's, it's really obscene when you think about the amount of uh, amount of schools that are going to change the landscape because they're shifting because they're moving out of their pack you know was pack 10 back in the day then it went to pack 12 now they're lucky if it's going to be a, a six pack uh in uh in southern california at least with ucla usc count so uh, a, a lot of great stuff going on there i know there there was some some notable speedsters uh today uh out of the linebacker group and, and these guys, you know, uh, Nolan Smith out of Georgia. Uh, yeah. Clearly we know what's going on with, with, with Jalen Carter. That's like a non-story right now until the facts present themselves, whether or not he was at the scene, but Nolan Smith just yeah. nailing in a 40 of 4.39. I mean, he just was blowing smoke um, yeah. from the line from the get go. I, I, I like the way he got off the line. It was fast. It was quick. His head was down for a little bit, but then it got high. And as soon as he was trucking down to get to that 40 spot, man, he just he just nailed it. I, I can't say out of these group of linebackers that there's been such a great amount of them in the 4-3, 4 type of range, but there's been quite a few. Who impressed you the most in that? I mean, yeah, because you think about it, because usually with that position, you don't really get that much speed. And it's one of those where we know – in that, you know, in that position, if you're fast like that, that means you can get to the quarterback. You know, as far as if you have some some a gap in your penetration, that's scary. That's one of those where you look at like, whoa, if you see him, and he got an open lane, it, you, you're toast. It's as, over. As <laughs> it's <know>. over. <laughs> it's over. It's over at, at that point. And you know, <clears throat> excuse me. There was a, a guy who was compared to Aaron Donald to come out of Pitt, uh, who certainly made his his presence known. Similar, you know, similar body style, similar body types. Um, you know, I'm not going to suggest that he's the next coming of, of Aaron Donald, but you know, uh, you, you can have that you can have that conversation as well. He comes out of Pitt, Collegia Cancy. You know, as a guy who did a 4.67, Aaron Donald was uh, 0.01 seconds shy uh of matching his speed of course he's fast he's quick he's very athletic at six foot three and a quarter uh with you know 285 frame um th- this guy this guy's a beast this guy's a beast what what really impressed you about him was it more about the, the comparables to aaron donald or was it his 40 time i think it, probably a combination of both like especially with that 40 time we know how, like, with defensive, like, defensive tackles, defensive ends, you know, hey, it's going to be moderate speed. You're thinking, okay, maybe five, you know, five is a change. And then, like you said, the size where it's almost like you, we can't necessarily ignore that because, you know, you got to think to yourself, 
you know, like Aaron Donald is from that same mold, even though obviously, you know, like 10 years later, but in the same fact, that's something that you cannot ignore. I mean, you look at just the size of it, of that, because a lot of people, you know, and that's another thing too, where it's just odd, like, and this is the time where the measurables are like, like key, where, you know, some, and, but sometimes I think in theory, we can throw those measurables away in a sense, as far as from a physical standpoint, and to see how he is on the field. So I definitely think it's going to be, um, I definitely was impressed by his 40 time. And also just the, the mold, like you said, it's already been there um, with Aaron Donald. I think, you know, he's kind of set that trend as far as not necessarily looking at guys at their size in a sense. But hey, you know, he if he could be just as dumb as Aaron Donald, you know, it doesn't even really matter. No, it doesn't matter at the end of the day because once you get to the quarterback, um, it's over. You know, you've already had the sack. You're you you have the pressure. You have a near sack. You have a forced fumble on the way to the quarterback by swatting that that ball down or swatting at the arms and elbow. You know, there there are many things you can do as a defender that will cause a flag to be thrown at the next level if you're able to get to the backfield. That's all there is to it. As simple as that. Uh, more, more importantly, though, when you have players that try to find a way to maybe break the mold of what they're used to playing into, it's like this little box. I think players get put into a box way too often in, in, in that, well, this is a system guy, and you know systems are great and wonderful, and we can have that conversation. Or we can say, you know what, it's good to have that guy, but at the end of the day, I want someone who can adjust on the fly, someone who can adjust and you know be that be that QB spy, be that difference maker. Whether whether you're a DT or whether you're a linebacker or an edge rusher, you know, just you you have that available athleticism in order to make things happen, even when the play is busted defensively, because it happens on the offense all the time. But we don't give the defense enough credit in regards to what that actually looks like. So. I'm I'm looking for more of one guy having two different types of, of, of personalities. One who understands the system at three four four three or in a nickel or in a dime, but I'm also looking for a guy who can make the adjustments on the fly. Um, what guys that you've spoken to or at least have had a conversation with, uh, where you're discussing diversities and following those lines of a guy who can play outside of the box versus those that play inside? Um, as far as, like, I think the one that really stood out to me was uh, Jamie Robinson. Um, he's a quote-unquote safety um, out of Florida State. He's he's very versatile. And I, and it's funny, um, reading somewhat of a scouting report, and it was like an anonymous AFC scout say, hey, some people might want to put him in nickel and some might put him in safety, but don't overthink it. Just put him on the field. Uh, I think, and, and the quote was, and I quote, "You can find a place for him because he can ball." And it's funny when he and you know someone asked similar that question, and he said, "Look, there's 11 positions on that field. I can play one of those." So I look at that um, as 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 somebody definitely if you if he's in a system where good defensive coordinator and a good defensive back coach who will get the best out of him. I think that's the one that's going to, that really stood out to me as far as someone who is essentially is saying it out loud and actually saying it and kind of coinciding with some of what the scouting reports have been saying. So um, I definitely think he's one that's really um, is going to be the one that I think that you can see, not necessarily saying that he'll be like a pro bowler next year or all pro next year, but, I think if he's in the right position, he's going to be what I, going to be some teams Swiss Army knife going forward. Well, and and that's the guy that you want. That's the one that's going to be the game wrecker, the game changer, your game winner, uh, someone who recognizes game when he sees game on the opposite side. Knowing his matchup is going to be equally as hungry, equally as passionate, and, and equally going to do his best job to protect the quarterback against your pass rush, be, against your best swim move. Everybody has them. All defensive linemen have it, you know, edge rushers, you know, and the such. Tomorrow's going to be even more interesting because you'll be able to see a lot more specific drills with linebackers. We're going to see a lot more swim moves. We're going to see uh, the types of uh, jumps, you know, in a broad jump or a high jump. Yeah, no, look, I totally understand that, you know, numbers don't lie. That's great. 
and I get it. But at the same token, numbers don't tell the whole story. You can say that, you know, Aaron Donald uh, was X, Y, and Z and ABC, and you can name all these athleticisms and such. Uh, however, um, that doesn't tell the whole story. His ability to do it on a consistent basis it, it is what tells the story. And that's one of the reasons why he's a Super Bowl champion. Uh, but in the linebacking core, you're going to have the basically the who's who um, of linebackers out of FBS, FCS schools, uh, guys that are just going to kind of blow your mind. So I'm looking for that tomorrow specifically. Anybody in the linebacking group that you're keeping your eye on right now, or at least uh, from your from, from your perspective, um, that's mm-hmm. going to make a make a breakout session and, and and just i don't know for lack of a better term just make it look almost childlike on the field tomorrow <laughs> um it's no one necessarily in particular i'm always i always look forward to those sec guys because i think those are essentially the the ones who are the standard where obviously we know out of that position is very rich in the nfl we got guys from Alabama. You got guys from Georgia. So you always want to just look at those guys, especially like with Georgia. Now they became like this almost dynastic team in college football. And you see where those guys make immediate impact uh, right off the jump. They're like, I call them like the plug and play guys. Um, you know, you just look at just as, as, as history, you know, as see, you know, in the last couple of years, heck, the last decade, where you got guys at the SEC. Uh, just make such a huge impact off, off, off the rip. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm looking for the immediate impact guys, the ones who have refined their skills at the collegiate level, willing to take it up a notch, whether, I mean, they, they've had time. They, I mean, they really have had time between the ending of their respective season um, and, and preparing for the NFL draft. They've had plenty of time to come into this uh, this combine full and ready to, to to rock and roll and really show these teams um, who are on staff ready to go. Um, did you see any free agent quarterbacks, by the way, just kind of hanging around there at the combines? We know David Carr, excuse me, Derek Carr was there earlier today yep. meeting with different teams as well. No Derek Carr signing, but I know he's he's in Indianapolis. And um, you know, now I did not see him, but I know he's he's he's. I haven't seen him in my visible eye, but I know he's around. He's been hanging around as well. That's that's <laughs> what I heard. Now, yeah, <laughs> Ian Ian Rappaport mentioned that he's all no, he's not he's not over my shoulder, but he's a guy who's kind of tuning in right now. I want to shout out to my other uh, wonderful partner at Trophy Case. Uh, this is a way for you to be known to be seen. Just like these guys that are on the field right now in Indianapolis, they've forged their way into where they're at right now. Imagine if they had trophy case. Imagine that. You're able to be seen, but you have to be in it, have a profile to try and win it. Go download the free app today, trophycase.app. That's trophycase.app. And if you get on it, you never know who's looking, who's watching, but the ones that you need to keep your eye on are those that are going to make your phone ring, especially in the 2023 NFL draft going on in Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, hey, Coach, thank you so much. Uh, wish you the best there. Um, there will be a lot of surprises tomorrow. Um, I, I can't quite name who that's going to be yet, but I can assure you there's going to be some head turners on the field tomorrow in the linebacking uh, core that's going to make someone's head spin. Uh, so it, it, it's going to be great. Um, so with that being said, Chris, hey, man, thanks a lot. Uh, I appreciate you coming on the show. Um, and if you don't know, uh, Coach, uh, you can go follow him. He's on Twitter. Go and give me your, your, your handles, Chris. Yes, um, at Couch Coach Live. That's easy enough. Everybody should figure that out. <laughs> Everybody should know that one. And of course, uh, go to the RudeDogShow.com where this interview is going to be placed. Of, of course, as uh, Coach Chris is there, Chris Powell uh, joins me here from Indianapolis. So thank you so much, Chris. Appreciate it. Look forward to getting an update on what's going on tomorrow via social media. Follow him, but follow me as well at Reyes. Go to the RudeDogShow.com. <laughs> 
Uh, and again, go to trophykeys.at, one of my great partners, and saturdayscount.com. Uh, when there are only 12 Saturdays in NCAA season, you may as well get your shirt from the team that you root for. Go to saturdayscount.com. Thanks, Coach. We'll talk to you tomorrow. All right. Catch you tomorrow. Thanks. Take care. All right.